Welcome back to the Natural Mediterranean Sewing Channel. My name is Alexandra and today I'll be showing you how to make the Riviera Caftan. There's also a bonus in this tutorial at the end to show you how to make a matching headscarf from your fabric scraps. I'm going to be making style A of the Riviera Caftan and I have this very special fabric. I designed the print actually from an old traditional Greek embroidery motif that I found at a museum and I got it custom printed at my favorite local fabric printing shop that I will link in the description. It's an organic cotton gauze and I also have here a lightweight cotton fusible interfacing. So we're going to use this on the neckline facing pieces to make them a bit more sturdy so your caftan doesn't just slide everywhere. I have all my pattern pieces here taped together and cut out the front back pocket which goes right where the dotted line marking is on the front and the front and back facing. On the front and back pattern pieces there's a dotted line that you can lengthen or shorten the pattern from. So if you want to add length you just cut on the dotted line and then insert a piece of paper spread the pattern open at how many inches you want to add and tape it back together. For shortening, you do the same thing. After you cut, you'll move the bottom panel up and tape it together. Since I'm using a fabric with a repeat pattern, I want to be conscious of where I'm placing my pattern pieces before I cut them out. I'm matching the point of my front neckline to the point on this smaller motif here. And I'll just follow it down, cutting it in half along my sewing line until I reach the bottom. For my back, I'm choosing the larger motif and just lining it up so I can see it go straight down the center. Now I'm going to place a pin where my pocket mar markings are. So just in the corners I want to match the same on the center front when I cut the other half of the front. I'm going to flip my pattern because I'm cutting one pair, so flip it face side down. And if you want an easy trick to match exactly where you've matched before, take your original pattern that you've cut for the other side of the front, place it on top of the pattern, just slowly bring it over so that it matches and lines up exactly on top of the other pattern. Before I cut out my pocket piece, I want to make sure that I'm also matching the pattern on this. On my front, I've put pins at each corner of the pocket. So if I put my pocket corners on those pins, I can get a good idea of what my pattern looks like. Mark some of the pattern shapes that you see. These are kind of cryptic, but I know what they mean. So right now I'm looking for that same pattern motif that's here. So two points together. So I'll find those two points together and match them with the dots I put on the pattern here. So point and point. 
those match. And then I should have a little piece of point here that I've marked. So that lines up pretty nicely with that. I'm going to attach the iron-on fusible to my facing pieces. I'm going to sew my front and back facing together at half an inch seam allowance on the top edges here where the shoulder seam is. I'm going to attach my pocket pieces to my front panels before I sew them to the back. Finish the top edge first and then we'll press the sides in so we can sew it onto the garment. Now we just want to go over the raw edge of our facing. To close all the seams, starting with the shoulders, then the sides, and finally down center front. Since I have a pattern to match here, at my center front, I'm going to use pins to match the pattern up first and then sew my seam. Pay attention to this point here at the center front neckline. You wanna make sure that your stitch finishes a half an inch in from the edge. So let's see how we did matching up the center front, more or less. But we're gonna do a single needle stitch down the front anyway, so we can overlap just a bit and match the pattern when we do our finishing steps. Now I'm going to pin the facing around the neckline. We'll put right sides together. And the first thing we wanna do is take a look at the point here and match it with the point on our facing. So just make sure your point is at the point. And we'll just work our way to the side seams. I like to push my shoulder seams back towards the back and then the facing is open. So when your neckline is cut on the bias like our V is, you may find a lot of difference between your body front neckline and your facing neckline. That's because we've fused and enforced our facing neckline, but not the body neckline. So what you can do is just try to work it in and massage it back into shape. On the other hand, you can run a basting stitch at a very long stitch length along the front neckline to secure that after you cut it out of your fabric. We'll sew with the body facing downward. So the feed dogs on the machine, your little um, serrated moving parts can suck the larger fabric in and get, almost gather it to match the original facing measurement.
Now we're going to do what's called understitching. Understitching is when you stitch down this seam allowance to your facing from the top of your facing. So push the seam allowance to your facing and we're just going to stitch all around the neckline on top of the facing. You might need to put extra slits in so that it lays flat. Now our facing is nice and understitched. You can see the stitch here so that it will lay on the inside better. Now I'm just going to do a couple more things to secure the facing. We're gonna stitch down on the shoulder seam here, and then we're gonna stitch down all the way the, down the front. We're gonna do our final top stitch down the center front to fix where our pattern got a bit wonky, but I do want to make sure that my facing is laying flat. So I'm just gonna put a little pin right here and here, just to make sure my facing's laying flat. I'll start at the bottom and work my way up. So we're going to stitch the seam down, fold it over to your left. And watch as I correct and overlap where my pattern should fit. Now I'm gonna finish the hems. After I cut my caftan out, I had a great chunk of fabric left over, so now I'm going to show you how to make a custom headscarf. The first step to making a headscarf is to measure your head. We're going to take the head circumference, measure it, and double it, and so this will be the perfect fit for you. So just take the measurement, put it behind your head at the base of the skull, and go over the ears to the crown of the head. My head's kind of small, so it's about 21 inches. Now I have my measurement of 21 inches for my head. Doubling that is 42. So just use a little pen and mark where you're starting to measure, and then 42 inches down. So I want my square to be six inches wide. So I have a four inch ruler and a two inch ruler. I'm just gonna put them them together and use it as a guide to cut. Now with my headscarf, I don't like my ends to be square, so I'm just gonna put them together, fold it in half, and then cut a curve like this. So your headscarf, you're first going to fold it right sides together and start at the tip. 
We're going to sew until about six or seven inches and leave a two inch gap so that we could use our handy dandy turner tool and turn it inside out and do a top stitch all the way around. And that's how you make the headscarf. Super easy and it matches, which is great. Make sure you like and subscribe below to catch all the new sewing tutorials I've got coming your way.